Hi, Dr. Dave here with Demetrius Gelatis of the Minnesota Pool Boot Camp. I'm a big fan of Dr. Dave, and I've been excited to spend some time filming and training together. We've worked on several videos of fun and useful stuff to share with you guys. We hope you enjoy and take something out of it. This video covers 10 very useful game-winning shots that many people haven't seen before. Here, Demetrius needs to pocket the 11 and hold for a shot at the 8 in the side for the win. To an inexperienced player, it might seem impossible to prevent the cue ball from heading up table because the cut is so thin. But with low inside spin, we can kill the cue ball for the hold. The bottom spin helps create drag action into the cushion and creates an angle for the inside spin to reverse off the cushion, which helps kill the cue ball even more. This is a useful shot to know. You ever end up straight in on your key ball like this and need to get up table for the 8 next? The most reliable way to do this is to stun forward with running spin off two rails. Here it is again from a different view. You can cheat the pocket a little if necessary to help create a small angle to send the cue ball toward the first cushion a little. Do you see how the running spin does most of the work? You don't need to use as much speed as you might think. Here's a similar shot with the object ball away from the rail more so you can better see the action off the first cushion. Again, look at the spin do all the work. Another option here is to draw with outside spin, but this can be more difficult to control in this game situation. When the object ball is close to the rail and pocket like this, a good option is to go rail first instead with inside follow. The follow action takes the place of the ball first running spin effect we saw earlier. Did you see how little speed the shot required? This is probably the best option in this game situation. In this situation, shooting stripes, needing to pocket the 8 for the win, many people would attempt a tangent line ticky like this. That shot works, but it requires a very accurate hit. An option with a larger margin for error is to hit the object ball fuller and allow it to roll like this. Now, you need to make sure you don't hit the ball too thin or with too little speed. You also need to make sure you don't hit it too full or with too much speed. But this shot does have a larger margin for error with both cut and speed as compared to the tangent line ticky. Here's an example of one hit fairly well. Here's another hit much thicker, but it still goes. And here's a very thin hit that still goes. Again, there is a wide margin for error with thickness of hit and speed with the shot. Have you ever left the cue ball frozen to one of your balls, making an otherwise easy out almost seem hopeless? Well, if you know Bob Jewett's twice as full system, you can easily recover from the mistake. Just visualize the line through the frozen balls, and the desired line to the target, and aim halfway between with a center ball hit. Under the WPA official rules of pool, you are allowed to hit into a frozen cue ball like this with a normal stroke since it does not result in a push or double hit. For more information, see the links in the video description. Here's another interesting frozen ball shot. A good play here that many people might not consider is a safety played with inside follow. The reverse spin leaves your opponent with only a tough bank. Rail cut shots like this, where the object ball is frozen to the cushion, are fairly common, especially in bar box 8 ball. This shot looks difficult, but if you hit the rail first with running spin, it is much easier than it looks. Although, if you are not good at adjusting your aim for cue ball deflection when using side spin, you will not be very successful. Here, I am using the system for aiming with side spin, or saws, to make the shot easy. 
For more information, see the links in the video description. Did you notice where the cue ball went? That's because I did not hit the cushion first, and the running spin took after hitting the ball. If you hit the cushion first, the spin will take before hitting the ball, and the cue ball will come off closer to the tangent line. Going frame by frame, you can clearly see the cushion first hit. If you hit the object ball and cushion close to the same time, the cue ball will go somewhere in between the two directions we just saw. Did you notice the wide range of cue ball directions possible with the shot, using the exact same speed and spin on each? Did you also notice that I made the object ball with a fairly wide range of hits between barely hitting the ball first to hitting the cushion well in front of the ball? Again, this shot is easier than it looks because it has a wide margin for error. If you are worried about scratching, you can add backspin to help prevent the cue ball from going forward. The running spin, cushion first technique also works at very steep angles like this. Again, I am using saws to get an accurate hit. With a little practice, you can even reverse cut the ball like this. I know you are probably thinking it took me a ridiculous number of attempts to pocket this ball, but I actually made it on the second try. Well, I got lucky. <laughs> I made the shot before that on the first try. And the earlier shot is a piece of cake if you know the proper technique and know how to aim when using side spin. Here, the object ball is off the cushion a little. In this case, the previous technique can be used, but the shot is a lot tougher. It is easy to sell out the game if the aim isn't perfect. A better approach here might be to play safe. You just need to aim to barely miss the 8 for a rail first hit like this. That's a good safety, with distance between the balls and no easy bank. Demetrius is now a big favorite to win the game. With a bank shot like this, a double kiss is a concern. I hit this at the correct angle to pocket the ball, but the object ball kissed the cue ball after rebound. Many people would try to avoid the double kiss by using speed to shorten the bank, allowing for a bigger cut, but this technique is not very effective with a shot like this. Although, a creative option is to go three times across with speed like this. A much better approach is to use transferred spin to shorten the bank. Right spin on the cue ball transfers left spin to the object ball, which makes it bank short, allowing for a bigger cut for the object ball to clear the cue ball after rebound. You don't want or need fast speed or a lot of spin here. The spin transfer is more effective at slower speed with a medium amount of spin. With a little practice, this shot is very easy to execute. When this technique still doesn't give you enough room for the object ball to clear, especially when the object ball is closer to the rail, another approach is to hop the object ball over the cue ball. You just need to elevate the back of the cue a little to hop the cue ball into the object ball, which makes it hop into the cushion nose, allowing it to easily clear over the cue ball. Another option, which isn't as good, but is fun to try anyway, is to jump the cue ball more so the object ball can clear underneath the cue ball. This technique can work even if the object ball is frozen to the cushion. Did you see how high the cue ball went? That's necessary for the object ball to clear after rebound. That one didn't go, but this next one does. Demetrius decided to catch the cue ball so it wouldn't land on my iPhone recording in slow motion. Nice catch, Demetrius! Here's the iPhone footage. Did you notice that the 8 ball double kisses the cue ball anyway? That's one reason why the cue ball bounces so high. But the 8 still has enough speed after the kiss to continue forward. 
This technique is not very practical in game situations, but it is a fun proposition or trick shot. The earlier technique, hopping the object ball over the cue ball, is much easier and more effective as a practical game situation shot. Here's a situation, shooting stripes, where a double hit foul is a concern since the cue ball is so close to the object ball. Demetrius would like to hold the cue ball behind the 8 for a safety, but he also needs to drive the object ball to the rail for the shot to be legal. Many people would try to elevate the cue like this to attempt the shot, but it is difficult to control. It is also easy to double hit the ball, which is a foul. At the link in the video description, I show many ways to avoid and detect double hits, but a good approach with this shot is to use your jump cue. Because the jump cue is so light, if you use a short stroke, it is very easy to avoid the double hit. It helps to use a really loose grip and wrist, holding the cue in your fingertips. That was a great safety. With the cue ball frozen to the 8, Demetrius' opponent shooting solids is in big trouble. Here's another frozen ball shot I learned from Demetrius, aka Tin Man on AZ Billiards, many years ago. This clip is from my What Would You Do Here video. What would you do here? You're playing 8 ball, shooting solids, and you're on the 8. Both balls are frozen to each other and to the cushion. The first option was suggested by Mike Page of Fargo Billiards and Tin Man on AZ Billiards. Here it is, the 8 in the corner with inside spin. For this shot to work, the cue ball must hit the 8 and cushion at about the same time. You can see the action of the shot in slow motion. Notice how the cue ball first hits the 8 as the cue ball is first compressing the cushion. As the cue ball compresses the cushion more, the side spin takes, causing the cue ball to push the 8 forward. Here's the shot again. I'll end with another frozen ball shot suggested by Jay Helfert. This is a proposition shot. The 13 is on the foot spot and the 11 is frozen behind it. The proposition is, putting the cue ball anywhere you want without moving the object balls, pocket the 11 directly into the corner pocket with a legal hit. Can you figure out how to do it? If you want, give it a try at a table before continuing with the video. Spoiler alert, here comes the answer. The trick is to freeze the cue ball to the side of the 13 and stroke toward the 11 as if the 13 were not there. Here's the shooter's view of the shot. This is a legal shot. As mentioned before, under the official rules of pool, you are allowed to hit into a frozen cue ball with a normal stroke. This shot would not work like this if the balls were not frozen. If the cue ball barely misses the 13 or comes off the tangeline of the 13, the 11 is cut too much to the right. You can try to time a secondary hit on the 11, but the shot is very difficult if the cue ball does not start frozen to the 13. This is the closest I was able to get without the cue ball frozen. With the cue ball frozen, it can go forward of the tangent line off the 13, allowing for the required timed secondary hit on the 11. Did you see the 11 move a little first, allowing for the cue ball to hit it at the correct angle? That helps the shot go a little straighter than it would otherwise. Now, you need to use a short stroke. Otherwise, you will double hit the cue ball like this, which would be a foul. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this collection of useful shots you need to know that go. Get to a table and give them a try. Only if you practice will you be able to pull them off when you need them in actual game situations. If you want to learn more about any shot or principle in this video, see the links in the video description where you can find more supporting videos and resources. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.
Thank you.